Hello everyone. In this session, uh, we'll actually understand uh, some more aspects of threading. In the previous session, we had understand synchronous threading, asynchronous threading, and some of the methods such as sleep, start, and join. Well, uh, in this session, we'll understand uh, thread start and parameterized thread start, which are the overload methods of this thread. You see, uh, there are actually four overload methods, but we'll take two. So you can see the parameterized thread start and then a thread start. So let's use this. So I have in the program, I have a test one method. And I'm using instead of calling this test one with the help of this thread, now I'm going to call this test one method with the help of thread start. Let's understand this. So I have a thread start, you know, I have an object of that, and a thread start, I'm sorry, new equals to. Yeah. Now you see here what thread start needs. It needs a target who's having the return type void and uh, the method doesn't have any parameters. So it, it is checking in the program, is there any method who's having return type as void and there is no parameter inside it. So do we have any? Yes, actually we have. You see here our test one method. If we see our test one method, actually it is the same. See, it needs a void and I have a void. It needs no parameters. I don't have any parameter in my test one. So I can simply pass this test one in thread start. So I'll say, I'll say p dot test one. And now in this thread, you see it needs the second overload method, method says thread start. I can pass this object now thread start. I can pass this ts here because it needs, you know, thread start object. So I can pass now ts. And now instead of instead uh, instead calling this test one method with the help of thread, now I am calling this test one method with the help of thread start. So now if I run this, you will see the same output zero to ten. Test one is running. And why do we need this? Is because uh, implicitly actually this th thread is actually actually calling thread start implicitly, and we cannot see it actually. So now if I right click and see go to definition you'll see thread start is the you know ultimate member of uh, thread okay so actually it is in the system dot threading so implicitly it is calling uh, thread start thread is calling thread start <clears throat> so that's why we can you know run this uh, test one and now basically we need another you know overload method that is parameterized thread start we'll also see that but you see if we uh, if we this is not actually a method if you see here if I go to go to definition you see it is not a method it is basically a delegate and we'll see this delegate uh, you know uh, concept in our later sessions but keep that in mind it is not a method it is uh, you know a kind of delegate uh, okay okay so we understood thread start basically and uh, why do we use thread start is nothing but compiler or the dot net framework is actually calling a thread and then it thread directly call thread start okay and then it is uh, and then thread is actually executing that's the process implicitly and we, we do not see that but the process internally it is going to be like this thread and th then thread start okay uh, let's understand uh, parameterize thread start with the help of you know uh, system dot threading okay so if I call parameterize uh, yeah parameterize thread start and I'll say ps equals to new parameterize thread start you see again it needs uh, this is a little different uh, see it needs it needs a, a method who's having the signature as uh, who's a return type as void and there is a parameter in the method okay it needs a target of that so do we have any method actually we don't have you see we have a method test one but there is no parameter inside that so we cannot run this test one in parameterized thread start so parameterized thread start is basically it needs a method who's having one parameter <coughs> or object type okay object type is compulsory so and you see here thread start if we talk about thread start thread start ts oh, if you see here thread start oh, come on Thread start ts e equals to new thread start. 
uh, start. Okay, what it needs? It needs a return type as void, and there is no parameter. So when there is no parameter in your method, you can use thread start explicitly. But when you need a parameter in your method, or when you have a parameter in your method, you can use parameterize thread start. That's the basic thing. So first of all, I need to create my method, this test one method, as a, a parameter. Okay, and I need to uh, fill this. I need to put some parameters inside this. Uh, this braces so what I'm gonna do here and keep that in mind I cannot use any uh, return type parameter I need object type okay only object type parameter I need to pass it so I can pass here object and I'll say a okay uh, what I can do here is see here this for loop is basically fixed it is working from 0 to 10 basically I can give a uh, uh, user defined. I can I can make this for loop as a user defined. So user will say that I need to uh, run this test one from uh, two uh, until uh, 300, 400, or 100 times or 50 times. User will tell. So uh, I had passed this object A, and I need to you know pass this A over here. Actually, I cannot pass this. See if I if I do that simply, if I do this, I is equals to I'll say A. If I do that basically give you an error what is the error is it says that uh, yeah first of all it says that operator cannot be used as it is an object data type so i i cannot do that so i need to convert this object data type into an integer because i need an integer uh, value over here right from the user so i'll say uh, let me take one another variable as integer range uh, equals to convert the int 32 and then I'll pass here a and now I can pass my range over here okay you see so what we did is we convert the object data type into uh, you know I, I actually need to pass a over here so what I did uh, I convert this a into some integer and I give the integer a variable as range and I pass this range over here now uh, now I can you know I have a sig I have a syntax matching you see parameterized thread start needs a return type void and it needs one parameter in the method so now I have a sig I have a syntax match I can pass this test one in my parameterized thread start here I'll say p dot test one okay so now this is working now what I'm gonna do uh, it's the simple process now in thread start you see there is the first overload method it needs parameterized thread start object so I can pass this PS over here okay and then the uh, and then you see this your start method basically it also have the two uh, you know overload method see t1 dot start See, first one is there is no parameters. That's the general case we use. We had seen that with the help of thread. Uh, we don't uh, provide the range over here. We directly the range is coming from for loop 0 to 10. We don't provide that. So uh, t1 dot start will run from 0 to 10. But now there is a variable. So it is running from 0 to range. And where to pass this range? Or keep that in mind. This range is basically integer data type. And uh, we are we are putting that range here. We are putting this range over here in the second overload method you see it needs an object parameter okay so I can pass now here you know the uh, the number of uh, times test one is going to be executed so I can pass here 10 so now I run this it will give you the same output as earlier test one is running from 0 to 10 you see Okay, so test one is running from zero to ten. Okay, so I hope you understand it. That what is actually the difference between thread start and parameterized thread start. Thread start doesn't need any parameters in the method, so uh, the signature is void test one, and there is no parameter inside this. Okay, and then parameterized thread start needs uh, a return type as a void, and a method was having one parameters, and you had seen that from here. See void object parameters and that's the target so that's why i need to pass you know the the same method and i have this syntax matching over here void test one and there is this object and then there is this parameters 
but the problem here is I cannot use this object data type as an integer because I need to pass the, the integer over here. I cannot pass this object A, right? We had seen that operator is operator is not valid in object data type. So we need to convert this object data type into integer, and that's why I use convert to int 32 and I convert this A to some integer and I had uh, used this variable integer variable range and I give the range over here and then this range can be passed in the second overload method of start okay which needs an object parameter and I pass this 10 if I pass 20 over here it will run you know the process will going to be run uh, test one is running from 0 to 20 okay so I hope you understand it a parameterized thread start and thread start actually you can use uh, you know there are basically there are so many shortcut method to use this uh, this uh, thread start or parameter is thread start you had created new with the help of new uh, you know uh, keyword you are passing the p dot test actually instead of that you can directly call your test method here so if i say test yeah if i if i say p dot test one it will also work okay the same output 0 to 20 okay that's the one case also, you can use something called as a lambda expression, uh, but that's not important right now. Uh, there is also called as anonymous method. You can, you know, you can use the implementation. You just copy the implementation, this one, and just, uh, just sorry, this complete implementation from for loop. Just pass this implementation here in this uh, delegate, okay? And that we'll see in the, you know, delegate uh, session. But right now, just understand this. There is something called as thread start and parameterized thread start. And uh, thread start doesn't need any parameter in the method, but whereas when you need a parameter in your uh, in your method, you can call parameterized thread start. And both thread start and parameterized thread start are delegate basically. You see here in the tooltip, it, it says delegate system dot threading dot parameterized thread start. And also you can go to definition directly and it will show you that it is a delegate type. It is not a method. See, public delegate void parameter is thread start and then there is this parameter one parameter okay it is the object type no other type can be worked so delegate is basically another type of method calling okay not a simple method calling it is uh, another type of method calling it's a type safe pointer basically we'll see this in the next uh, you know session uh, so this is all about uh, threading i hope you understand it thank you so much